illustration of behind enemy lines. You might say I'm going behind enemy lines to look at the World War II role-playing game that was published by FASA in about 1982 time frame. Now, this is not a, you know, a standard war game, but this is a war game role-playing game. And it's one of the first that I think I came across that was really dedicated to um, war and role-playing a war scenario or, or characters that are, are in a war environment. Um, you had, of course, Dungeons and & Dragons and Top Secret and Gamma World and a whole host of other role-playing games that uh, came out in the 70s and then into the 80s. Um, and actually, the first one that I played was Traveler. This is the old beat-up box that had my uh, black books in it. Um, but then I, you know, I came across this one, and it was kind of reminiscent of Traveler. Because in Traveler, you know, you have these little books here, you know, that talk about your character in combat. You know, you had your starships, because this was a space um, role-playing game. You had the worlds and adventures. And then there was expansions. You had mercenaries, high guard, which talked about, like, the Navy kind of characters. And then you had you know, scouts. Those are just some of the books that uh, I got here that, that I purchased that had, uh, that dealt with the different characters. And, um, I really like that format where you, you know, had the little books that came out and talked about, uh, different characters and how you generated them and what their skill sets were and the like. This one had some of a similar feature in that, and let's crack open the box here, that you had books as well. You had little some counters. There, there is some maps in here. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. You know, the dice that came with it. But you had, uh, it came in books. Like you had book one, book two, book three that came with the game. And then I have one uh, expansion that came with it. But you had these uh, books that were kind of reminiscent of Traveler. And the first book talked about character generation, generation and the basic rules. Then you had event tables, and then you had missions. And then, of course, I got a book four, which was a British commandos uh, that really talked about uh, the main mission here was like Lampeliers. These are guys that went in and put mines on ships, uh, kind of reminiscent of by stealth and sea now, the uh, Italian um, uh, torpedo riders. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of, of that when I was uh, started playing that game. Anyway, uh, this game, you know, had the books, and the first one was character generation and basic rules. And one of the interesting things about uh, Behind Enemy Lines is, you know, you you didn't get you you probably it was probably good advice not to get too uh, um, t attached to your characters because combat in here was somewhat realistic. I mean, when you got hit, you died, uh, and that was kind of a brutal aspect. But you know, that was more akin to. Uh, to actual war here but you know you had your character generation and and it wasn't like so in regards to the character generation it was really focused on combat you have a world war ii soldier so it's going to be you know what is the physical attributes what are their um what kind of skills they have which were all combat skills of course or, or skills that you're going to be needing for maybe commando missions um it wasn't like you're trying to build a very broad character that was going to go on you know like in traveler you know galactic you know adventures you know this is you know combat characters for world war ii and it was really focusing on that uh so you had some background skills like what you're taking into like basic training and then you had your basic skills you know you know rifle first aid what have you um and then you got your rank and what experience points you had and then some other skills that you could get. But as you can see here, this all first aid, bayonet, uh, browning on a Mac rifle or bar, bazooka, machine guns, and your strength, what you can carry. I mean, it's all based on really on combat. Uh, and then, you know, the, the combat you have here is wound severity. You know, you can, you can be killed instantly. Uh, light wounds, there's, you know, uh, here's a simplified uh, wound table, K killed to moderately wounded. I mean, you know, combat was very brutal in this game uh, as as it is in real life. So um, your game mode, so this is all about movement and getting through the different terrains. Uh, then you have, again, more combat movement here. 
And then you had your siding. Again, in any war game, you know, siding's always a, a big issue. Uh, and in, it's here as well uh, because, you know, it's a matter of what you can see and what can, you can hit or what you can get hit by. Uh, night movement in combat, surprise, weather. Uh, here's combat, We're going into a little bit more detail on combat. Uh, you had your different ranges, point blank, close, medium, and long. And then, of course, that was affected uh, by the weapon uh, and then what your skill was. Uh, artillery fire. So you had mortar fire, grenades. So, you know, rules for everything. And you can see there's not like tons and tons of rules to it. There's just, you know, some, some narrative around it and some charts. Here's your weapons. And then, of course, you have the different ranges here, close, medium, Long, extreme, rate of fire, and rounds. You know, ammunition's a big issue here. Uh, and again, this game is mainly done, you know, it, it's like a series of commando type missions. You're, again, according to the name, it's behind enemy lines. So you're going on missions that, um, you know, that are not just straight line combat, you know, like squad leader or what have you. This is more um, commando type missions and you're, you're trying to get intelligence or doing advanced scouting or, or something like that. So you're, uh, a lot of times you're trying to avoid combat and when combat comes up, you know, you have to deal with it, but it's not just a straight, uh, you're on the front line fighting here. Here are flamethrowers, hand-to-hand -hand combat, of course. A little bit more rules on that. Tanks, because you can run into tanks. That's always a fun experience when you're just a uh, couple of guys in the field. And there's all the different tanks out there. And of course they have their, you know, armament and crew and their armor value. Of course you, know, you need a bazooka or something for that. Here's the different hit locations. So a lot of good information here. Anti-tank weapons that you need for that. And then you have event tables. And that's really kind of get, governs the system. There are missions that you can play, but there's also, and I'll get to that when we get to the event tables books here in a second, but there's a way that you can kind of kind of solo play this and just kind of make it a choose your own adventure type situation. Here's maps and map making, here's troop quality and morale that can affect the game, interrogation and rumors, medals and decorations, communication. So mines, gear, so you have all kinds of different uh, you know, rules here to talk about, here's paratroopers, to go into, and I think there was actually a uh, expansion that maybe went into more paratroopers. They did some books on this. I didn't get a whole lot of it. Um, I just got the, the base set and then the, the British commandos. Uh, Rangers surviving, because it is surviving. This is, a bit, this is an interesting topic here because, you know, combat is, is very deadly in this game. Um, so it's not like you're going to go advance to level 10 and get a castle or keep. You're, uh, you're mainly just trying to get through your missions. And it's all about experiencing the mission or trying to experience something um, from a role-playing aspect in, of World War II. So then you get to the event tables. And this is the interesting part that I used to just kind of goof around with. Uh, you have these event tables that are it kind of reminds me of some of the event tables like from old D&D where you can just like – go in and do some of these events you just kind of go off on a mission like do the woods and see what happens and kind of roll on these different event tables and see what happens and what you have to fight against and you can kind of just you know don't even have to do a, a set mission you can just play around with the event tables and generate your own you know kind of mission or adventure or what what you're what you're going to experience in the field and so they have all these different event tables depending on you know, town or heavily damaged town and all the different things you're experiencing. So this whole book here is just really event tables that are pulled from the missions, you know, the kind of the engine to the missions as you go through. But you can just kind of goof around with the event tables yourself and, and kind of have a, a solitaire type uh, experience here. Then you had some emissions that came with it. This is book three. And there was uh, penetrating enemy lines, uh, different type of bridge event. Uh, road traffic here, meeting the resistance, you know, there's an airfield, there's a rescue from the sky, here's long patrol, rescue from the sky, uh, pillbacks on Hill 409, Machine Gun Hilton, Night Encounter, so you got these different missions you can go on here, 
Um, and they have, you know, vent tables based in there as well uh, that are specific to that mission. But, you know, it, it really is um, just a lot of combat, you know. So if you're used to playing, you know, squad leader or um, ambush, um, those games back in the day, or, uh, then um, this was kind of a, a, felt very similar to that. And this was more of, you know, putting the role playing aspect on it uh, a little bit more. You have a game master that did the narrative and, and the like. Then I got this book, book four, and I think there might have been a, there was like a Guns of Navarone book, I think, that came out too that I was always looking at, but I never got. Um, but I did pick up this book four, which really went into British Commando. So this book is, again, reminiscent of kind of the Traveler books where they kind of went into a deep dive on a certain aspect of a, of a character class or, or area. This one really went into British Commandos, their background and skills. And then, of course, they had some uh, missions that were uh, tied to, um, you know, the weapons and everything that was tied to the British commandos. But then they had some missions that were uh, unique to the, the British commandos. You know, they had the, this uh, here mission here where you had to go into this estuary or, and, and then put mines on some ships, some German, I believe it was German ships here. See, there's the Lampeliers there. You see there. So this was a whole mission kind of based on that uh, in there. So this was kind of interesting to get into. And I, I know I, I know they came out with the Guns of Navarone. I don't know how many more books they came out with. I kind of stopped at this, asp, uh, this at book four. Uh, I don't know if they went into like all the different forces or how much more they did on it. Uh, also, that came with the base game is these charts. Here's your combat. Uh, Mode movement, additional combat movement, your sighting charts, which are always important, your effects of random artillery, your direct fire, wounds, severity, always important. And then you had like a, a character sheet, and this was on you know, kind of a little heavier cardboard here that you could you know copy and then make your characters uh, or write out your characters. Tank artillery, grenade throwing. You know, rifle grenades, those were used a lot in some of the missions that I went on. Hand-to-hand -hand combat and the like. So you had a few charts that came with it. And then, as I said before, you had some counters that came with it, which are pretty basic. Um, and then you had some maps that came with the game. Like, this is for the Long Patrol, uh, for use of that mission. And so you had a few maps that came with this. But, I, you know, overall, this was an interesting experience. I really liked... Um, this game from the you know the, the experience it gave you it was very unlike traveler or well it's kind of like traveler in the sense that you know your character wasn't just didn't keep advancing all the time i mean traveler once you create your character you've got your your most of what your basic character is going to be and then you um go out into the universe and do stuff you know D, &D is is an advancement type game you know you, you want to get levels and the more levels you get the more skills and the more stuff you get this one you know you're basically what you have at the beginning is what you are and then um it's how you use it right it's it's the experience it's the missions you go on and the like so um it was a little bit different in that respect it was also that you know your character's died so you might take a squad out uh, for a mission and, you know, you might not come back with everybody. More and more likely than not, you weren't going to come back with everybody, especially if you got uh, got, got uh, caught up in some combat, uh, especially with some tanks. That, that was always very fun. But um, interesting. I thought I thought this was a, a very good game in that, you know, it brought role-playing, <laughs> my old traveler stuff, it brought role-playing to... Uh, World War II and to and, and a kind of dedicated to a war game. Um, the the next one that I played in this kind of genre was Recon, which dealt with the Vietnam War. I'll I'll do a whole segment on that, but not a lot of especially in this time period. This is eighty two. Not a lot of role playing games that were really just focusing on war. If there were, I I missed them. Uh, but this was one that I found. Uh, that I that I liked and found it interesting, and I really just liked the way it was set up with the event tables, so I could just kind of go in and take a patrol out and just kind of kick around. Uh, the missions themselves weren't that complicated. I mean, they were pretty much driven by their own event charts 
or event tables, and you would go back to some of the other event tables in the other book as well. But sometimes I just goofed around with the event tables and just saw what I got, so saw what happened, and kind of made my own narrative uh, and 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 did it that way. I did play this with with a group of people a little bit, not a whole lot, because the group I was playing with they were really more into Dungeons and Dragons and and other role playing games, um, and then some of the people that I played war games with they just weren't as interested in this they were more interested in you know uh pushing the cardboard on the hex encounter map but uh you know this th this was an a, a interesting niche here uh i thought it had uh decent rules i thought it was you know uh very tense because of your you know character elimination was was very prevalent and um I liked it. I really did like it. I did a little bit with a friend of mine where we would play squad leader, and then sometimes we would, uh, after we play a scenario, we would take break this out and try to recreate some of the stuff from a from with our role with our characters that we had had generated, uh, and, and the like. So it was kind of diving down deeper into it, which is kind of similar to what I do in some of my deep dive. Uh, videos so you're kind of just taking a deeper dive down into some of this stuff but um anyway i thought i'd just do a little exploration of this today uh dusted this off the shelf don't haven't seen a lot of stuff out there anywhere on on um on the net <laughs> or anywhere else for that matter on this game kind of a forgotten um legacy of the role-playing 80s but uh thought i'd share that with you today thanks for spending some time with me <laughs> Thanks for watching.